In December, I put out a notice that CRGX was a buy at D. We do talk a lot about IPOs. Uh, John Ross, as you can see right here, he's uh, he's here tonight. He's our resident guru on IPOs. I think John took my IPO course a few years ago, and he's taken that ball and, and ran with it or run with it. I always get those confused, but maybe somebody could correct me in the YouTube comments. I'm willing to learn. English is uh, not my first language. Let's take a look at this CRGX. It's a great little example of a buy D with some caveats. So you see it comes public. That's day one. This is day two, day three, day four, and day five. So on day five, we know that day one set the high for the week. Now, the normal buy B would be to look at the closing high, which was on day four. And any close above that, now obviously you don't know where it's going to close, but if it's well above that entry and the stock's getting ready to close, then you know, okay, I need to go ahead and get in on this partic particular stock. In this case, obviously, it was pretty close. It was, I'm, I'm sorry, it was well in excess of 1510, which would have been your entry on that. Now, keep in mind, this is a normal buy at B. It's one of the simplest things I've ever come up with. And I'm amazed at how well it works. And it's just something that uh, I'm I'm pretty excited about. And it, it's it's held the test of time so far. Sometimes you come up with something and then it just doesn't really work in real markets longer term. But I did my due diligence on this pattern for a long time. And then I released it and it's worked out really nicely so far. Knock on wood. Anyway, because day one set the high for the week. So if day two, day three, or day four would have taken out that high, then that would have been the high for the week, okay? But you can see we got all the way to day five, and that high was not taken out. And I'm just kind of thinking about this. I guess if it gets taken out, yeah, even on day five, it would, it, it would have to close above this high to be an entry. So here's the day one rule buy. Again, on the close, and you could maybe buy a little bit earlier in the day if it looks like it's going to close at that level or, or above. And that would be, in this case, 1575, 1580-ish, somewhere around that area. But anyway, if day one is the highest for the week, I guess up until bar four. It's funny, as you, as I teach these things, I flesh them out more and more. So I guess it would have to be, if, if day one is the high for the first four days, then then day one rule is in effect. And I'll noodle with that a little bit to make sure that's absolutely correct. But I think that's how we're, we're trading. And it's interesting, something as simple as this, once you start picking it apart, questions begin to arise. Anyway, here's the trades. I just grabbed these out of one account because I had a round number of shares, 1,000 shares in this particular case. So here's here was my buy at B. And you can see it didn't do too well at first. I did give it a couple of points of wiggle room on the stop. Now, I'm not sure what happened on that day, and I went back to the fourth, and I noticed my trading journal. I did not mark why I bought 50 more shares of this. I have no idea. If memory serves, it, that gap looked pretty good. It looks like it was a keep on keeping on, and I, I I just threw in 50 shares. I don't know why. It, it, why just 50 shares of, of a $17 stock? I have no idea. So that's just kind of like S and G. Maybe I was going to flip it out for a quick little day trade or something. I don't know. It was kind of a, a stupid trade, so I'm just kind of showing you what happens worse at all. That's one thing I thought about when I was going live tonight or right before I went live is the more and more transparent I become with trades and stuff that I'm doing and all, the more I sort of show you that I don't do everything perfectly and there's always room for improvement. But anyway, so flipped out 500 here for a profit of 837 and then I was out the remainder yesterday for a profit of 1857. So overall, it was a pretty decent trade, 2600 2700 dollars over a fairly short period of time. I didn't get around to annualizing it. My wife's always like, "What's that thing you do?" I'm like annualizing, because I'll look at like, oh, you know, you make a thousand dollars today. Well, that's two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. You make a hundred dollars a day. Well, that's twenty five thousand dollars a year. So don't sneeze at small profits when you when you're offered them.